In this video, I'm gonna walk you through everything that I know about prompt engineering so you can build better automations, AI agents, and overall just 10X your output using AI. And in case we haven't met, my name is Michele, and over the past 12 months, I've personally helped over 40 businesses implement AI and automations and taught over 20,000 people in the process, all starting with zero technical knowledge. With that being said, let's dive in. All right, so every prompt is actually divided into three different parts. The first one is a system prompt, which is giving AI an identity. The second one is a user prompt, which is giving AI instructions. And finally, we have a system prompt, which is giving AI examples. Now, the reason why we give AI an identity at the start is because usually it's, you are a helpful, intelligent XYZ assistant. You are a helpful, intelligent, note-taking assistant, resume screening assistant, financial assistant. And the reason why we do that is because when AI is given a personality, an identity, it actually sacks itself. So it starts thinking that it actually is that thing. So the output will be better, right? it will increase because of the fact that now it has sort of a role to play. Then we have user prompt, which believe it or not, is a prompt that you guys are personally, or even me, uh, are giving Chad GPT right now, which is, hey, can you do this for me? This is the goal, this is the instructions, and this is the input. And so goals, instructions, and inputs are all gonna be under the user prompt. And then finally, we have a system prompt. Now, a system prompt is a reason why a lot of your outputs are not as good as it should be because you're not giving it examples. And a lot of you guys talk about guardrails, right? You say, hey, my prompt is not good enough. It actually goes outside of the prompt that I give it. And it's all because it doesn't have enough context as to what it should do. So it falls outside of that prompt that you initially give it. And so that's why we give it examples to then make it understand like, hey, here's the typical input and here's the typical output. Based on the new input, can you give us an output? Now, the only problem with assistant examples is that if you give it just one example, which is a one-shot prompt, depending on what you're trying to do, then the AI will be deterministic or at least more deterministic, which means that you can determine the output. So for example, if you give it an input and an output, right, and then you give it a new input, it will look at the exact input and output that you gave it as an example, and it will follow that very, very closely, which isn't the best when you're looking for AI to be sort of creative with the way that it actually writes or thinks, um, but it is still very important to put in our prompts. So this right here is a prompt that I made, system, user, and assistant, which is for a use case where an AI is meant to take our resume, our CV, which is basically listing everything that we've done in the past in terms of jobs, all that activities and so on. And then it will take a new job description and it will write a new resume based on our experiences and the job description. And it will customize the resume based on the skills and requirements needed for that specific job so that we have a higher chance of actually getting that job because our CV is more tailored to it. And so right here for the system prompt, the first thing we say is you are an expert career coach and resume optimization assistant. And so just by giving it that system prompt, right, that identity, the output will drastically increase in quality just because it knows what it is. Let me say you help users rewrite their resumes for specific job descriptions using professional, concise, and impactful language. And so we also give it some context as to what it is and what it does. And then we get to the user prompt, which is your goal, right? In this case, goal is to tailor the user's resume to match the job description provided below. Then we have instructions, highlight relevant experiences and remove unrelated details, optimize the language using strong action verbs and keep formatting simple and ATS friendly. And so by giving it the goal and instructions as well, it has those guardrails so it knows exactly what to do. And one important thing here is that by giving AI instructions and goals, it basically puts up those guardrails, which makes it so that AI follows our instructions better rather than just being creative and coming up with new outputs every single time. And here we have user input, which is the resume and the job description. Now these curly brackets that you see are just the input that you give it, right? Usually in automation, these will be variables that are pulled in from the previous step. And this will be an AI step in the middle of the automation. Um, based on the inputs that we get before. And finally, we have a system prompt, which is an example input and an example output. And so for example, we say, here's a resume, which in this case is very short just because I didn't have enough space here. And here's a job description. We're looking for customer success, specialist skilled in communication, CRM tools, and client retention. And here's an example output. And so we give it a, what does good look like, right? What is our expectations for what it actually should look like? which is great because now it will refer to this example based on the input and the output when we give it the new input right here, resume and job description. Now, the biggest questions that I get asked when it comes to prompt engineering is how big should your prompt be? So the length and how many examples should I feed it? And so right here, I have one graph for length answering that question and one graph for examples. And so this graph shows that with more length, so with the prompt being longer and longer and longer, the accuracy of the actual output will decrease. So one is perfect, right? So this right here is the top of the top, boom. 
And then the lower it gets, the worse the accuracy is. And so one in this case will be across this line. And so as you can see that as more input is given, so this is 500, this is 1000, this is 1.5 thousand, 2000 and 3000 tokens. The difference is about, I'll say a 4% um, change in output, which is quite a lot when it comes to the actual accuracy of the prompt. And so obviously it depends on the actual model, GPT-40, Pro, Mistral 70B and Mistral 8X 7B. Obviously the model matters a lot. And so bear in mind that your prompts, the more information you feed it, the less accurate it's gonna get because it has to think through a lot more things. And logically it makes sense, right? Even if you give an employee, hey, here's a humongous prompt, here's a humongous amount of instructions, it will be less accurate because now it has to look through everything and it might miss some important points. Rather than you making the prompt shorter, more concise, more dense, so that the AI only has a few things to focus on and the output will increase. And the one question that we should all be asking ourselves when writing the prompts is, can I write this in less words? Can I be more concise? And that's how you get the accuracy just to increase by a lot, depending on the amount of input tokens that you add. And by the way, if you're wondering what one token actually equates to, one token is about 0.75 words. So when we talk about a thousand input tokens, that will be, according to my math, about 750 words. Now, the second question to ask yourself is how many examples should we give it? Now, an example, when you see few shot, one shot, zero shot, a shot is just an example. So we say zero examples, one examples, a few examples. And so you can see that orange is few shots, green is one shot, and blue is zero shots. And so the more examples we give it, the better context it has, or the better guardrails it has, and the more accurate the actual output will be. And so on the one side, we say, hey, don't make your prompt too long because the more input tokens, the more words, the less accurate it will be. But on the other side, I say, hey, you still have to add examples, right? It's better to add a few examples, so few shots, rather than one shot or no examples at all. Now I'm gonna jump into N10 right here and show you exactly how prompt engineering actually applies to our automations. So this right here is a Google Sheet where we have unformatted names, right, with a mixture of different um, capitals and no capitals and so on. And I wanna make an automation that will take these names and format them in a way where I can use them for my cold email campaigns or just outreach. I'm gonna go here to N and And the first step is going to be to get rows. So Google Sheet, get rows in a sheet. I can find it right here. All I have to do now is connect my Google Sheet. I can go here, sign in with Google and you can go through the whole process to sign in. The thing we're using is a sheet within document. The action that we're taking is operation. The document we're using is the unformatted names, the sheet will be sheet one. And if I go to execute step, I can now see that I should get on a table view, the row number and the name. And these are the ones that I wanna pass on to AI for it to actually format the name properly so it can give us the output for us to bring it back to the sheet right here in this column. Now I'm showing you this because prompt engineering is a big part as to how this works. So let's go through it. So the next step here is to use an AI model. In this case, we can use OpenAI. I can use Messenger model. All you have to do here is connect your account. To do this, you can go to platform.openai.com. You can go to dashboard. You can go to API keys, make an API key here, sort of like a password to say to n hey, you have authorization to use my OpenAI. Place it here and you'll be fine. Then we have the resource, which is text, which is a thing that we're actually manipulating. The action that we're taking is messaging a model. The model in this case is very important as well because depending on the task that you're doing, we have to choose the model that adapts to that specific task. And so for example, today, we're gonna make an automation that only needs to format names. So in this case, I would just use a GPT 4.1 mini. But if you want a model that can actually take some more time in reasoning and thinking about the actual output, then you can use the Pro or Deep Research, I believe, GPT Pro, O1 Pro, which take a bit more time. There's more reasoning, more, um, I guess it takes more energy more credits uh, when it actually gives you the output. So in this case, the messages are the prompts. And as you can see here, we have system user assistant. So in this case, we start with the system prompt and we say, you're a helpful, intelligent uh, name formatting assistant that helps me to format names and put them all into the first letter being capital. Let's just give it the structure of the prompt and let's change it. You are helpful. You are a helpful, intelligent, you're helpful, intelligent name formatting, formatting, actually name formatting assistant, you help in taking a unformatted name and make it formatted by, make it formatted. I just, yeah, 
and just make it formatted. Then we have the user prompt, which in this case is giving it also the name and giving it instructions. So if I go here to full screen, I can say goal. And if you're wondering what this is, it's just using markdown formatting. So if I go to docs and I press here, goal, I can see that this turns into heading one. This turns into heading two. I go here, same thing with heading three and so on, right? And so by giving it marked on formatting, it understands the hierarchy of what it should look at. The same way that an essay has titles, subtitles, the actual text and so on, it's the same thing with prompting. So goal would be, you are going to be given a name and you need to format it in a way where only the first letter of the name is formatted, is capitalized. There you go. So let me give it instructions. So instructions, so this is heading two. instructions. This could be use the name that is given to you as an input, format it so that only the first letter of the name is capitalized. And then we're gonna give it the output. So the output in this case, would be return the output as JSON. And again, if you're getting overwhelmed here, just hold on and I'll show you exactly what I mean. And the JSON will be formatted name, name here. There we go. So the reason why we do JSON is because we wanted to format it in a very specific way where it only gives us the actual variable. It only gives us the name. It doesn't give us the, yes, I'd be happy to help or here's the whole thing. We just want the actual variable, the actual name. And so that's why we give it the output as well. And then here you want to add the input. So input name on format. So you just bring this across and this will be the new variable to format. And by the way, because we told the AI to output this as JSON, we want to output content as JSON here, turn this on. So it knows that it's going to give it to me in the actual format that I wanted to. And if I turn this off and I actually run this, what this will now give me, and it should be pretty quick, is the name that is formatted in a way where only the first capital letter is um, done. So you can see Michele, James, Michael, Larry, and Jaden. Whilst previously, table was Michael, Larry, Jaden, and so on. So I turned this into a way where it actually makes sense. Now, as you can see, the content itself is JSON, and we don't want this, right? And so if I turn this on, what this will now do is it will take these five names, well, six names, and it will give them to me in a way where I can actually read it and it makes sense. So if I go to table, I can see that now schema formatted name is the actual variable name and the output will be the actual formatted name. If I go to table, I can see that we have Michele, James, Michael, Larry, and Jaden. Now this is great because we're only using five items, but the reality is, is that the more examples or the more inputs that you give it, so let's say we have a Google Sheet of a thousand or 10,000 different names, there's a good possibility that our prompt will not work. And so that's where we have to add assistant prompts right here, assistant. And so in order for us to add assistant, we have to give it a user assistant prompt, okay? Which is a new concept. And so for example, we can say, hey, I give you this name, Michele, and the assistant prompt, so the output should be this, should be Michele. So we say, this is the input, this is the output. And you start putting user assistant um, sort of pairs so that it understands that we give it this and it should give us this. We give it this and it should give us this. So that the next time we give it the input, it knows based on these different examples, what the output should be so they can actually format it in the right way. So right here, I can go to user again and I can say James, so on. And then assistant. There we go, James. Now for the sake of this actual, and I can run this, and by the way, we'll just use these different examples. So one and two examples. And usually if you give it 10 or 20 to cover all the different use cases of names that could happen, that would be amazing. Uh, but now if I execute this step, it will obviously give us the same exact output because again, previously we're only using five different pieces of information. And now it will give us James. It will give us Larry, James as well. Okay. And obviously the actual formatting will be the same. But as you can see here, we only have one problem. We have the problem that the formatted names, they're all James now, apart from Larry. And the reason for that is because when we're using user and assistant prompts, the last thing we give it is this. 
Why? It's because we say, hey, when I give you this, you give me this. When I give you this, you give me this. Now I'm gonna give you this. So the output needs to be the actual thing. So if I run this, I will be able to then get all the different series of outputs that I want. So Michele, James, Michael, Larry, and Jaden. Rather than the thing I had before, which is all the same names because I'm giving the input before, but I'm also giving it a few examples, which basically trips up the AI. Well, so we add the input at the end. And finally, I can now rename this to format name and I can update a row. Google Sheets, there we go. Update a row in a sheet. Document will be the unformatted names. The sheet will be sheet one. And then we can column to match on is unformatted, actually row number, yeah. And then we can go here, row number two. So we're basically saying, hey, this is the row number, update the name to this. And the actual formatted name will be Michele. So if I run this from the start until the end, I should be able to see the different names being formatted here, 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 and here. And it should take a few seconds just because AI is running. And you can see we have all the names being added here. And so that right there is how we use this system, user and assistant prompt within our automations right here. Now, as you can see, it got a bit more complex when it came to using the user assistant prompts within our automations. But just understand that the system prompt is something that we always need to have. I don't know why I zoomed out. Then we have the user prompt, which is just giving it the goals and instructions and the way that it should give us the output. And then we start giving it the user assistant, user assistant, and finally we give it the actual input. And so if you wanted to add more examples, make sure that this input is at the end, always at the end. All right, and if you want a full document, which basically packages everything that I spoke about today into a nice and easy to read document, then check the second link down below, which will take you to my free school community. You can go to the classroom section, go to the templates vault, and right here, you'll be able to see the latest video, which in this case would be prompting, and you'll be able to see a button to actually go to the Notion document and start using it right away. And if you apply and you get in, you get to be part of a community of over 3,400 people who are meeting every single week, twice a week. And you also have the AI Automations 101 course, which is a very, very comprehensive course that takes a real beginner in AI automation to someone who's actually able to build automations for themselves and for other businesses. Disclaimer though, is that not everybody gets in. So when you apply, put some thoughts into your answers and I'll see you on the inside. So I hope now you understand prompt engineering, the way it works and the way that we can actually apply it within our automations, whether it's n 10 make.com, Zapier, everything applies pretty much the same. And if you're someone who wants to start and scale your AI agency, then check the first thing down below, which is a video where I walk you through our one-to-one -one mentorship program. And if you're looking to dive deeper into n 10 then definitely check out this video up here where I go through a 12 hour tutorial, uh, taking you from a real beginner in n 10 to a master in building automations and AI agents for themselves and for other businesses. With that being said, I hope you found value from this video and I'll see you in the next one.